and New York Giants Sports Talk Entertainment. Oh, it's, uh, what's today? Wednesday. Wednesday before the big game. Everyone's over in Arizona having a wonderful time, I suppose. The Twitter sphere is blown up with hatred for Joe Judge and Daniel Jones. All the neophytes and all the fans that were such in love with him are now like, well, we knew he was going to suck. We knew Joe Judge was a fraud. Yeah, really. <laughs> I love people. No, I don't, but just it's just funny to me. It's just funny to me. We got to talk about Jake from State Farm. We have to from. <laughs> we have to talk about Jason Garrett potentially going to Duke, which would be the weirdest bizarro world thing that I would ever see. We got to talk about just everything going on in giant land and all that fun stuff. But let's talk about old Jake from old Jake. Will he be starting Sunday? I don't know. Still don't know yet. If he is starting, it'll be interesting. If he's not starting, it's going to be Glennon. So we kind of just play, got to play the waiting game. And even if he's not starting, he's probably going to be somewhat uh, offensive minded because of the fact that if you even have Daniel Jones played with a neck injury, you never know how long he could play. If Glennon plays, you don't know how, how short of a leash he's going to have on him. So, you know what? Jake may be the guy at some point in time in L.A. I had to go back and look at film and I had to go from Georgia and it was, it was hard to go back and find the preseason stuff. I mean, it was, it was, it was almost impossible. He did play in preseason. I know, I know he did. Um, so when I did find the preseason, it wasn't spectacular. It was hard to find a lot of footage on him, but I was able to find some stuff in 2021. He completed 21 to 36 for 172. He didn't have any touchdowns. Um, also, I don't think he had any interceptions, but he was sacked five times He also had 17 yards and a touchdown on three carries. That's his preseason stats. That means nothing. I've said it a million times. Preseason means nothing. Did he look great? No, but you know what? He he was also a rookie. So, I mean, it's, it's an interesting perspective. I did speak to someone, uh, the gentleman who, who's, who sometimes feeds me information. He's no longer in the league, but he did is a scout or former scout. Um, some of the things that he said about Jake coming out of college, that um, when he's pressured and he's got to get the ball out quickly, he, he's that kind of negatively impacts his accuracy. He's probably the most accurate within 10 yards of a line of scrimmage, which is good because that's what the Giants kind of kind of do. He's good at, the, uh, you know, uh, you know, throwing to the backs in the flat and doing a little quick dishes here and there, uh, you know, patterns on the shallow crossing routes. He kind of really struggles when he's going deep and this is in college when he's going deep, but uh, you know, in middle of the field stuff, but you know what? We don't go deep. <laughs> so that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. Um, he's not a guy that throws a lot of interceptions. He's a guy that kind of, he, he, he plays conservative at times. He understands he doesn't, he doesn't try to make that big throw. At least again, like I said, this is going back into college, you know, he, he's not going to get a, He's not going to get you those big chunks of yards downfield. He is really sharp in the red zone. You know, and that's key, especially for this team. Um, and, you know, he, he's, he's one of these guys that's willing to take sacks, which is kind of what we need. And he really doesn't panic when he's under pressure. He really doesn't. But like I said, he's, when he is blitzed, his accuracy does go down. But he's, he, he's not a guy that panics. He really doesn't. One of the things I like about him quite a bit is that he's the kind of guy that he will work through his progressions. He works through the full field of play. So that's good. He sees everything. He'll also trust a lot of times his backside reads. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's a, he's pro capable. To me, he's a pro capable player. He's quick. He's efficient moving off from his first option, which some Daniel Jones doesn't do. He's very spree with cerebral about this. He's very, he's very, he's very focused. He's very mindset. He's very, he's very, he just, he just goes through his progressions, which I like a lot about this guy. And he's also another guy. Again, this is going into college that he's very good at his pre snap reads. He understands where to move his targets. He knows to throw out of spots. He's a good guy. He's good at quick timing. He's pretty much on point when it, when it comes to that. But he's, you know, he's, does he thrive under chaos, which is the Giants offensive line might be? I don't know if he's going to thrive under chaos because he comes from Georgia, who usually has pretty much pro-ready offensive lines. But he's a well-composed kid. 
he 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 doesn't ha- he's physically limited, so he's not going to go off script. He's not he's not going to be a Kyler Murray, and he kind of lacks some of the physical attributes that you would want. But he doesn't panic. He doesn't panic. He's heady. He understands ball security. He understands that you sometimes need to take the snap. Excuse me, take the sack. Like I said, he doesn't have the big time arm. He doesn't. He doesn't have the big time arm. But we don't need that. We don't. We don't. We never go long, anyways. But you're keeping him within those 15, 20 yards. He's very good. One thing I did like what my friend was saying was he has pocket awareness. He senses pressure and he knows when to protect the ball. Daniel Jones looking at you. And he, had, he already told me it was funny. Maybe you laugh. He goes, he knows how to slide. <laughs> he's a good, I would say he's a, he's a good pocket passer. Mechanically sound. He gets the ball out quick. I think he's got good footwork. Like I said, he's not gonna he's not gonna be blinding with you with his with his forty yard time, but we don't need that. He's sneaky fast. I think his some of the some, like I said, I would say if you want to say what is his best attribute, I would say it would be his decision making process. What are you gonna say is his worst? He just doesn't have the arm strength, and I, I I don't think he's gonna be capable of making all the throws that you need to as a starting NFL quarterback, but as a guy that's coming in as a backup and a guy that's coming in as a spot starter, I, he, he may not be terrible. Like I said, he's a kid that makes good decisions, not afraid of the pressure, knows when to take a sack and understands ball security. Now people are going to point out his 2019 game against LSU. That was a bad game. <laughs> that was a bad game. I'm not going to lie. That was a bad game. But again, you cannot judge an entire college career off of one play. Well, that's my layman's breakdown of not even my breakdown. That comes from a professional because I'm anything but a professional. I don't pretend to be a professional. I don't even play one on TV and I didn't even, I didn't even stay at a desk. Uh, what is it? Best Western <laughs> or days in or whatever. <laughs> oh my God. I do have to laugh because Jason Garrett. So Cutcliffe got fired over at Duke <laughs> and the Raleigh news an observer is reporting that Jason Garrett is getting attention from Duke. They're looking for a new coach passing. And of course, after parting ways with Cutcliffe, he was at 14 seasons at Duke winning 77 games. Uh, Duke went three and nine last year, but what, how funny would it be if Jason Garrett landed a job at Duke, <laughs> the guy, the football gods, are like are like laughing right now. The football gods are setting up their own Mount Olympus going, um, our Mount Football Olympus going, uh, yes, we we shall send Garrett to Duke. <laughs> I mean, that would be, oh my God. You can't make this stuff up about the Giants. You really can't. I mean, you can't sit there and go, wow, you know, this, this, it, it, like I said, if it wasn't for the Giants, I probably would have, uh, I would never, <laughs> I would never, I would never believe half this stuff. I love it because the New York Times came out the other day saying Giants risk averse offense contribute to the four and eight record. And I've said this a million times. You want to blame Jason Garrett and you want to make him the scapegoat. That's fine. But I believe it's all part of the Joe Judge offensive philosophy. And I've said this before. And I'm probably the only YouTuber out there that understands this and has seen it since I worked in the league. Everything is predicated off the offensive philosophy of defensive philosophy of your head coach no offensive defensive coordinator sitting there maybe outside of buddy ryan sitting there going ha 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 i'm going to run what i want to run no it's all built off the philosophy of the head coach and i believe this philosophy of this head coach is not to take chances and when he does take chances they're not even at the right opportune times just throwing that out there Joe Judge to me is a college coach, not even a college coach. He's a high school coach. He's a high school coach that got a job in the pros because of Belichick. Let's be honest. Can we just be honest about it? Can we just say it? And I've always said it before. I am always honest. I'm honest to a fault. But can we just say that? He is a high school coach, a special teams coach that got a job in the pros because of Bill Belichick. Because of his Belichick lineage and, his, and the Belichick connection with the Giants. Can we just say that? A lot of people are going to point out that the Giants lead the league in injury reserve players. 
Yeah, before then, I think it was the the Chargers. <laughs> but that's okay. It's that's another that's another wasted news. I'm sorry, I'm drinking coffee at the same time here. Oh, I'm telling you guys, this team is hard to root for. It's funny when Lawrence Taylor said that he's not even rooting for this guy. We picked up uh, what's his Clayton Thorson. He's going to be on the uh, practice squad. You figure Lewerke is probably going to move off the practice squad as well. Um, I mean, it's 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 an, it's interesting. I mean, I would like to see Lewerke. He Lewerke can Lewerke it. How long have I been waiting to say that again? This team is just a train wreck to watch. Has been for two years. Has been for two seasons. And I, like I said, I just find it funny now that everyone's as we're getting closer to the four and eight and four and nine portion of the season. So many people on social media are like, "I knew this was going to happen. I saw this coming. You didn't see it coming. You didn't." I've seen the post on Twitter. Don't all of a sudden make yourself out to be an expert because because you're calling it now. Some of us have been calling this for two years and been told they have no clue what they're talking about. I actually had a, a subscriber. Um, and I want to have him on. He went back, <laughs> God bless his soul, the last two seasons and went through most of my videos and pointed out everything that I got right up to this point. Everything that I said that was honest and truthful without the fan hat. And he was like, you were like 87% right. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, how do you know it's 87% and not 895 just got to be honest with yourself, guys. You got to look in the mirror when you see stuff. Yeah, you want to be a fan. That's great. My theory is this. If you're on social media or YouTube or something, like, you need to be honest. Unless you're a fan channel, then just say you're a fan channel. Don't make yourself out to be a football expert when all you're doing is making content to get the clicks, the likes, the bleeps, and the bloops. I've said that a million times. Be honest with your people because you know what? A lot of people rely on social media to develop or build their opinion on a team. And a lot of people, there's a lot of younger fans out there that don't watch the film, don't watch ESPN, don't listen to sports radio, and they get their information and news from YouTube. And I think it's people out there being very disingenuous when they say some of the stuff they do because they know it's going to get them higher up in the rankings or get them the likes on you Twitter or whatever. And, and, that, and that's one of the reasons why this channel was started. I know I'm pontificating. But you know what? I want to pontificate today because of the fact that this is a train wreck again. Joe Judge is a high school coach. He's a track coach. He's a track coach, Zach. <laughs> I believe that. Dave Gettleman needs to be gone. We need a new quarterback. I've said it a million times. You look outside, go outside the giant bubble and see what other teams are saying about Daniel Jones. Nobody wants Daniel Jones. Someone will probably pick him up cheap. I love the people that are like, well, we'll trade him to Detroit. Why the hell Detroit's going to want Daniel Jones? They got their own version of when Jared Goff. I mean, we just need to be honest as fans. And you know what? Enjoy the rest of the season. At four and eight, I'm going to, it's funny to say, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the season. Because now there's no added pressure to be good. There's no added pressure to make the playoffs. You're four and eight, closing it on four and nine. Just enjoy what you see. See if we can't build something in some the, around with some of these young players. See if we can't move them into the right direction. Build some talent. Because we're not good at cult. We haven't been good at cultivating talent for years. And we, we've done the videos where we've shown how many people the last five to seven years are not on the giant roster but are in the NFL. And there's quite a number of people. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous number because we don't cultivate or build talent or hold on to talent. We need an organizational mindset. We need a change. We need something. We need a hero. I've said that a million times. That's what we need. We need someone that's going to come in here and is going to turn everything around and is going to make this franchise what it was back in the 80s, part of the 90s, and even into the 2000s. We need a hero. I'm Batman. We need Batman. We need Batman to come in here. We do. We just need something. And maybe starting Jake is not a bad idea. He's going to be in LA. It's a game we're probably not, we're not anywhere projected to win. Give the kid a shot. See what he's got. We have to look at talent. Brightwell. Throw Brightwell in there. David Sills. Old David Sills. 
who can't even get on the roster with all the injuries, throw him out there. Why not? See what the kid's got. If he's got nothing, let's just get rid of his ass. I'm tired of seeing him on the practice squad. But let's just figure it out as a giant organization. Let's use these last couple weeks to turn this around into looking at evaluation of talent. And then let's just move on, start anew, draft Malik Willis and a defensive lineman and go two picks in the second and third round for offensive linemen. Try to pick someone up in free agency, which we can't. I love it because there's going to be draft video. There's videos now of people doing salary cap. Yeah, I've been doing I did that months ago. <laughs> Welcome to, you know, <laughs> I did that months ago. And I, I, I laugh because I added a new sound effect that uh, I'm going to use when you're when you come in and you're new to the chat. But like I said, I what I can also it's very apropos. Now I use, like I said, for the people that are just doing the videos now about the salary cap issues who said the salary cap are flu- fluid and don't really matter and are just figuring it out. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. We've been doing that for how long now? Oh, sometimes I just love to pontificate. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, ring that button, you know what it means. That'd be awesome.